Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Brittany Simon. Let's talk about Squid Game. So I have the cast sitting on my lap here on my phone. I'm not going to give anyone's names because I'm not going to memorize anyone's names. So I'm just going to say their character tropes or something to reference them. Like the main character as an example. Somebody who obviously is a one. And I am so excited to explore this with you. A lot of you requested for me to watch Squid Game to talk about the levels. So that's what we're going to do. If you guys are unaware of the levels, it's an observational philosophy slash language that I created. Links down below for all the details. Watch the two videos in that description and you'll be up to speed with lingo. Okay, so let's take the main character. Somebody unlikable. Within five minutes, he's rude to his mother. He's a bad husband, divorced, and he's a bad father, neglectful. Obviously, we know this trope. We know this trope of a person. Now, in my view, as I'm watching it, automatically I was like one or two C, but most likely a one. My brother and I watched it together. Now we grew up in an environment in which this situation would not happen to us. We would not be the target audience for the Squid Game humans. Also, if you have not seen this show, I'm absolutely going to spoil it for you. So this main character, unlikable, first five minutes of the show, I don't even feel invested. We see him go through life just selfish and not even unaware, but deliberately making a decision. Very one-like. And there's a difference between two C's who maybe are caught up in gambling, sort of caught up in the hecticness of life, debt. You see those people in this show. But our main character in particular, for some reason to me, even in the first five minutes, my brain said to me, ah, Issa won. But I didn't have the evidence yet. We get that a little later in the series. Now, as we move through the story, obviously we start to know different characters. Like, this best friend of his sort of, not best friend, but sort of this guy who definitely gets hotter throughout the series. He's this businessman, went to this good school, but he's in stupid money debt, right? And so he ends up in the same place his friend growing up did, who according to society, as they view these friends, one friend was successful while the other one was not. One went to a nice school and became a good businessman and the other did nothing and relies on his mother. And ironically enough, as it's pointed out in the show, still end up in the same spot regardless. A person in debt, so desperate in debt that they are willing to play games in which their life is at stake. Though you could argue that life itself, the experience of existence is a game with life and death. For shows like this, these are the questions I assume that they're trying to make us think about, which is great. For somebody like me and a lot of my friends, obviously we're a little older, we've read a lot more. I'm assuming for a lot of people, this was the first Korean anything they have seen or the first question into what does it mean to be a human and how do we discuss the value of human life? So this would have been, I think, a really nice introduction into that. Now, if you don't pay attention to the details of the show, literally how, like the lot, okay, there are definitely scenes in this movie, this show, in which you sit there and go, okay, well, that's not actually possible though. And you just have to kind of ignore it. Like, the the hot guy detective who was running around the facility and he didn't get caught for days even though it was pretty clearly easy to catch him the fact that they were harvesting organs for part of the organization but the main organization knew but didn't care it's like there are certain things that just i don't know for me didn't really make sense but if i see it in a metaphor an analogy a concept of exploring existence as an art piece then I feel like it makes a lot of sense and actually isn't too bad. It's actually really good. The color schemes, the deliberate choice of set pieces, the actors were all fantastic. The emotion that was conveyed. I watched it in sub, not in dub, and I do not recommend you watch it in dub. So while I watched this show, obviously the whole time I'm thinking about the levels and I'm thinking about how to convey, you know, what levels people could be. Obviously in my head, I'm thinking, oh, this main guy, this hot guy in this mask, whatever he might look like, and we find out is quite attractive after. This man here is obviously the main, the main guy. But then you know, throughout the series, you realize he's not the main guy. And so you start to wonder, okay, so there's a hierarchy happening here. These like two wave VIPs, these rich people, specifically white people, with the exception of one Korean, is sitting there and just betting on the lives of human beings. But yet, I can't even be mad at them. Let me explain this really fast for people who did not see it, but don't care about spoilers. Basically, the first time they got pulled into these games, it was basically unconsensual, an unawareness that death would be at stake. So I do think it was unconsensual and not fair. The second time around, the the people in that original group, 93% of them came back to play the game. So at that point, they're really just, you know, I don't have to cry over them dying. This is just a matter of who's going to be the best at winning. And at that point, you change who you're rooting for. 
In the beginning, my initial gut was to vote vote for somebody who I thought was ethical, like the sister. I was like, okay, I'll vote for her. She's not the greatest, but she's not the worst. She she has a reason and a motivation for doing what she's doing that I can get around, okay? Obviously, the story progresses. Then it becomes, oh, shoot, maybe the guy in the business, like the business school guy should win. Or wait, maybe like the bully should win because he's just going to win by sheer strength. Or maybe the crazy lady, which would be sort of funny. And then at the end of the day, it was the main character I was mostly rooting for. But for for reasons of like hope that maybe he wasn't going to be one and maybe he would learn his lesson and be a good father and a good a good uh, ex-partner and just a good present person in his mother's life so as the show progresses obviously the money is growing and everyone's more you know they're becoming more panicky i unlike other people do not believe people who are under stress or in fear are doing what they really would do i think they're doing what their panic brain is telling them to do much like i don't think weed or alcohol exposes your true self i think you're just the self you are on those narcotics on those drugs so for me when I'm watching this show I am not judging them on a moral basis of oh you shouldn't do this because there's some moral implication of not doing it I'm judging them based off of their ability to understand their existence what they've chosen to do and the position they are now in and now to decide within their own values where they should go because remember I don't judge people on my own values I judge people on theirs figuring out where a person is on their level system is not a matter of finding out where their values lie. It's a matter of finding out how they can comprehend their own existence in relation to the universe. So here we go, we're watching this show, we're trying to judge these people on so many different layers. Lots of people wanted to judge them on their ethics. Oh, is this person a good person? Should I be rooting for them? But the irony, of course, is that the creator of these games brought together some of the worst people in our society and was like here here's your second chance of redemption or whatever they wanted to call it so we're going to skip to the end since you guys know i'm going to give spoilers i'm assuming you've seen it if you skip to the end the main character after trial and tribulation after seeing people die countless times after really trying to be a good person through the process and stick to his values and and denying you know temptation in many ways and taking the advice of the people around him he got to the point where he was in conflict with player number one who okay so prior to the ending happening just a few episodes before we see player one die allegedly obviously we know he doesn't die but in that moment during that game where number one and four five six the last guy our main character when they're having their game in marbles the funny part about it was that From the 456 perspective, he's watching player number one succumb to his tumor. And so if you're there to win the game and the game is already life or death, there is absolutely no logical reason to allow an old man dying of a tumor who's losing his mind and peeing his pants the right to live over you who has an obligation to a child outside this house and all of these responsibilities. So again, you know, this game is very... It's just a, it's a horrible thing to put people through. And we do it often in society without realizing it. Hence the metaphors, I think, through the show. But I think the the part I really didn't like was that people, yes, it was messed up what he did to the old man in some sense. But in some sense, it would have been equally messed up for that old man to sort of put his friend in a position to not even play the game. Do you get what I'm saying? Like the old man, ironically enough, was cognizant. We learned later on at the end of the show that he was faking sort of losing his mind, give or take, right? That's the impression I got. If you guys got a different impression, tell me. But I got the impression that his that his, that he was playing it up to make 456 have to do something. And I think that's fucked up. So here's the irony. Follow me through. So 456 ends up winning the games. And through this whole process, as he's winning these games... And he he gets to the end. He's just miserable. He's in turmoil. He not only loses the life of that girl who had a brother in an orphanage. Okay. He lost her, which he kind of, I think, used her as this motivation to like be good and be better. And then in contrast, his friend kills himself at the end, allowing 456 to win, but giving 456 the guilt of knowing that he could have saved his friend and his friend didn't even give him that chance, which is within the rights of the friend to live and die how he wants, obviously. So again, we're always in conflict with what's the right thing to do. But obviously the guy who was his friend, I think 218, they couldn't they couldn't make it work. Like he wasn't gonna make it work in the outside world without winning. And at this point he was basically dead, right? His mom wasn't gonna, he wasn't gonna be able to face his mother. And at the end of the day, I think people make decisions. 456 went on, didn't spend the money for a year and ignored, you know, any responsibility for his life. Went back into being a bum. His mother died, died while he was away. Um, His daughter moved to America. 
his life fell apart and he continued to let it fall apart for a year. In some ways, it was like, oh, he didn't spend any of the money that he won. I think it was like 30 million plus or something US. And it's one of those things where you're like, okay, is that, does that make him a good person or a bad person? And then we see player number one again. The old man that we thought had died actually orchestrated this whole thing. An old man with a dying wish, I guess, for amusement. So here he is, this old man in this hospital building or this like, I don't know, warehouse. I don't even know what it is, guys. It's this fucking building. He's sitting with his bed. He's got his little heart monitor on and they're looking at a homeless man in the snow and the homeless man is dying. Okay, this is the scene. This is where it wraps all up. So I'm watching this show. And I'm seeing this old man who we now know is this billionaire and this person with money and this person who just wanted to have it fun before he died and this person who believes humans are bad and they're not good. And I'm looking at him and here am I trying to view the show through the levels. And I'm like, okay, so everyone throughout the show was basically twos and ones. But who were the two A's? Obviously the VIPs. And then I was thinking, is the Korean man, the old man, a two A? Is he somebody who recognizes we're just humans and we're all going to die and that's where he's reached? But there's something he said that stood out to me. When he said that, see, people are not good, and they've never been good. I've never seen them be good. I can't help but wonder, hey, old man, who was such a good character throughout the series, have you ever thought that maybe if you didn't just hang around asshole people, you wouldn't think the whole world was asshole-ish? It's like the fresh and fit guys. You bring around like the worst parts of society and then go, all oh, women are this way, all oh, men are this way. And that is what the creator of this game ultimately did. He literally picks the worst parts of society who are in horrible positions to pit themselves against each other in a life and death game. He hangs around with gross billionaire VIPs who are disgusting and not consent based, who are gross old rich men. Okay. He doesn't hang out around with me. He's not hanging around with people that are chill. He's not hanging around with his neighborhood, Mr. Roger. He's hanging around with some of the worst people society has to offer and then going, you know, I think the world really sucks. Yes, because you're in a bubble. Which again is why two A's, two B's, and two C's are still twos. Because they live purely in bubbles. And threes feel that edge. They pop out. Oh my God, is there more to life than this? Yes, absolutely. And then you get to four, which is like, oh my God, this is life. And then you realize, oh my God. And then five is, oh, this is life. All right. This old man with all of his billions has never lived a life in which he was reassured humans were good. And that tells me you're in a bubble. Now, some people have accused me of being in a happy bubble where they're like, Brittany, you've only been around good people. That's why you think people are good. Bitch, are you going to ignore my 20 years of mental illness, my suicide attempts, my assault? Are you going to are you going to ignore all of the turmoil I have gone through? Tell me what's more frustrating for you. The fact that I've been in shit and gotten better. Or the fact that, you know, you're in shit and you don't want to get better. Because at the end of the day, you have to make a decision to be a different person. And that is why our main character, with so much potential to be this three, four, five, made the decision to remain a one. So at the end of the series, and I heard from many of you who are like, Brittany, Brittany, you're going to hate the ending. You're going to hate the ending. Listen, I understand why you thought that. But you have to understand who I am. I accept that this show was created by an artist, a person with a vision, and a person with a goal to communicate something. And so as a viewer, it's not my job to be satisfied. It is in some way. I agree. Don't get me wrong. And instead, I went into the show wanting to know what the author was trying to tell me. And so what I actually got from him was that he knows ones, even if he doesn't have the language for it. Because at the end, as 456 is now embracing his money after he's talked to the old man and seen him die, he's realized, oh my gosh, this whole thing was just orchestrated by this man that I thought I connected with but didn't. And oh my gosh, at the end of this movie or this show where this old man is confirming with 456 that humans are awful, look at this, look at this homeless man on the street that's dying in the snow. The old man misses it, but 456 gets to see a woman come and save that homeless man and do the right thing. And ironically enough, can I just point out to the number one, this old man in this show who orchestrated this whole game, that you yourself were standing in a window looking at a man dying and also did nothing? That you can't complain about the world not doing anything when you yourself does nothing? And at the same time, we are not perfect human beings and things will go wrong. And yes, some of us have walked next to and passed dead bodies on the street who are homeless, not even knowing it. And yes, maybe even some of us knew they were dead and kept going. Pretending that human beings are something special is so arrogant, but it is so too. It's this idea, even fives fall for it, fours fall for it. We have moments of, 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 you know, humans are really special and magical. And then we take that to a degree that is so outrageous, we forget we're not. I had somebody write on my channel, very nice person, 
very lovely person. And I know this is a tangent, but stay with me. It's so important before I wrap up this video about why he's still a one. This woman wrote me on my channel, very nice lady, no, sh no shade to her. I agree with everything you said in the video, but can you please like keep black people out of it? Thanks. Like you're not in our community, so you would kind of need to stay in your lane. Black people all over the globe have been abused on a massive level and that is find it disturbing that people simplify it so much. It's just, oh, it's just hair. I think it's very three or four for a person to understand the spiritual ramifications of black hair and what our hair means to us. Black hair is very spiritual and it has a very dark past and the fact that you just make it so simple is very disturbing and very two of you. But I need, I need it to be very clear that the level system is about recognizing your literal meaning and purpose of existence in relation to the universe, not just what it means to be a human. So if you come to me and say, I can't talk about black hair, Brittany, stay in your lane about black business because black hair is sacred. And I need to remind you that hair is just a thing that exists. If the hair on my head is sacred, then the pubes on my genitals have to be sacred or around my genitals. The hair on my toes have to be sacred. There's no way that this could be sacred unless you live in a belief system in a bubble. We can, again, take that idea that humans are special and magical and take it to the nth degree and start talking about how our little eyes, ears, boogers, shits are sacred and special. But what the levels are supposed to do is you move you through like a radical acceptance that like we are not special and our humanity is not rooted in how our bubbles define our, our, our uniqueness or our consciousness. I do believe we have souls. I do believe we have a consciousness and I believe this physical vessel is the thing bringing me and taking me through life. I think they work in conjunction and I think they work uh, against each other sometimes. But I'm a Brittany and I do not live in a reality in which anything about me is sacred on an objective level, simply subjective. My body is sacred. My breasts are sacred in some contexts. And then in other contexts, nope, they just titties. So again, no shade to people who live in bubbles. But the definition of a two is somebody who lives in a bubble and has a belief system and an understanding of their own existence only in relation to that bubble. If ultimately human beings still continue to believe that their sacredness comes from the physical attributes that happened through evolution, from my understanding, then we're never going to talk about the same things. If you think your specialness comes from a god, we're not talking about the same things. So how does this wrap into why he's a one and not a two C? It's because our main character doesn't live in a bubble. He physically exists in one, but spiritually holds no values, is not consistent, and lives purely for him, his, himself. Like even more than Rand could ever have lived for herself as an objectivist, he lives purely for himself. Very one. So our main character, after he has this moment, okay, embraces the money, the old man dies, he's heading, he's in, at the airport or at the train station, he sees... Uh, Daddy slap a bitch. Oh, I love him so much. Perfection, 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 perfection. Okay, so daddy slap a bitch. He sees him, finds another man with a card, calls the number as he's about to get on the plane, guys. He's on the plane. His life is better. He's got money. Everything makes sense. He can move forward with his life. He's going to go see his daughter, but no, he gets the card and calls the man in the mask. Creates a stink and the man in the mask threatens him. Says, get on that plane. Do, my, do not make this an issue. And then our main character who's literally been a bum for basically his whole life. Yes, I understand he had a job at one point and he got fired 10 years ago, but I'm sorry. You get fired, you mope about it for two years max, and then you get off your ass. And that's two years is me being friendly because it usually takes me about 30 days to find a new job. So bitch, I'm not even holding you to my standard. I'm giving you an exception for mental health. But 10 years of not finding a job after you've been fired, bitch, that is a lifestyle choice. So our man who's been a bum basically for the last 10 years at least, m you know, mutilated his marriage. His mother died stressed, worried about him. Couldn't even do that. Spending money he didn't have and then abandoning his daughter. This guy decides at the end of the show, instead of seeing my daughter, I'm going to call the man in the mask, demand justice as if I'm a good person. And then turn around, abandon my daughter once again and my responsibilities after I've just gone off the phone with her to chase down a man in a mask in the name of justice. When the man in the mask literally knows you where you are and where you're going, has resources you'll never have, you are so poor with your 30 million US, my homie, that you wouldn't even be able to qualify as a VIP in this show, according to its own rules from what I understand. With all of this said, our man remains a one because once again, regardless of resources, education, and ability, chooses to still be a fucking idiot. <laughs> fucking idiot. It's like, I'm sorry, sir, did you become James Bond between one of these plot points and I missed it? Where do, what does he think he's going to do against the man in the mask? 
what does he think he's going to do? He just realized the universe just told him, here, buddy, I'm going to blow your bubbles so you understand how the real world works. And he goes, no, I'm Superman and I'm going to go save the day. I think the reason people hated this ending is because most people are twos. And so most people watching it want the gratification of having a main character to root for and a main character that's going to be good in the end. And the reason I enjoy this writer already is because though I didn't really, it was predictable and I could guess a lot of the tropes that were happening, it was still a really good, really good There's levels to introspection and I feel like it's a really good movie to watch when you're like in middle of your journey because our show to watch just because there's a lot of good things there. And again, if you watch shows like metaphorically, it's much more enjoyable than watching it for literal like, is this even possible? Overall, obviously, a lot of the characters I could have gone into, but I think the one that's most significant is our main character. I'm excited for season two. I'm very interested to see where the, the writer goes with this. But what I'm mostly interested in is what did you get from it? Did you learn anything about yourself? Did you have a moment of introspection? Did you think it was boring? Did you think, you know, I don't know. What did you think? I would just love to hear it. Also, just 10 out of 10 for the acting if fantastic everybody everybody was just so good it was so good and guys how clear were those tropes the crazy girl who literally has to sleep her way for protection the girl who chooses to fight versus her body the man who's a bully the hierarchies the cliques the high school energy that starts right away around adults we all know it exists we exist here on youtube adults are literally just reliving cycles their whole life. We're kids, we have bullies on the playground. We're in high school, we have bullies. We're in college, there's bullies. And in, in, in real life, like what real life is supposed to be, we have politicians and they bully each other. I mean, look at Donald Trump. He's literally, he literally tries to bully people. It's hilarious. And then Biden snaps back at him. It's so funny. And these are the people who are in charge of you. Congratulations on being a human. Okay, thanks for watching. Have a good day and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.